Dear students, welcome to this interactive case presentation of anemia. This is not a lecture, it is an interactive case presentation and uh, the aim of this case presentation, it is designed to stimulate critical thinking of students. We start with the case history. A 22 year old female presented with a three months history of easy fatigability and increasing pallor. She had no fever and no skin rash, but she had mild weight loss and anorexia. Her bowel motion was normal and she had menarc since the age of 12 years. As you see that the information uh, from the patient's history are relatively simple and uh, there is no important past medical history uh, that we can elicit for this young female. In the clinical examination of this young female, her vital signs were normal, pulse, blood pressure, temperature, and respiratory rate. In the general examination, the patient had moderate pallor, no jaundice, no lymph node enlargement, and no bleeding spots. Her heart examination revealed a grade one systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, mostly is a floor murmur because of the anemia. And the examination of the chest revealed normal vesicular breathing, it is normal. The examination of the abdomen revealed normal liver span and the spleen was not palpable. And the neurological examination was normal. As you see in the physical exam, the findings also were few. So now we want to discuss the probability of some of the causes of anemia in this young lady. And as you know, the differential diagnosis can include a very long list, but our brain picks the important or the common causes and we need to verify whether the probabilities of these differential diagnoses are there. The first differential diagnosis is iron deficiency, B, beta thalassemia minor, C, anemia of chronic disease, D, she could, uh, she could be a case of hemolytic anemia, and E, could be a case of acute leukemia. So how uh, we are going to put the probabilities of these differential diagnoses. The first step that we go in this process is that we think first, what are the positive findings in the history and the examination of this young female? You see that 
The main presentation was the three months history of easy fatigability and increasing pallor. It gives an idea that the process was slowly progressing. I mean the anemia uh, causing pallor and easy fatigability. Also, she had mild weight loss and anorexia. And she had moderate pallor during the physical exam. And she had a soft systolic flow murmur, which is an expected finding in patients with significant anemia. Now we come to think of the important negative findings. The important negative findings help us to uh, put priorities of the differential diagnosis. You see that there was no fever, there is no bleeding history, there is no skin rash or bleeding spots, there is no jaundice, there is no lymphadenopathy or hepatomegaly or septinomegaly. You see that these findings are important. Why? Because if we find bleeding spots or bleeding from uh, other sites, we may think of uh, thrombocytopenia on top of the anemia. And this may give as a hint that uh, probably there is a bone marrow failure. Also, the presence of fever can be explained by decreased immunity. The presence of jaundice makes a hemolytic anemia a possibility. The presence of lymphadenopathy also suggests that there is some sort of hematological malignancy like leukemia or lymphoma. The presence of hepatomegaly and cyprinomegaly uh, may uh, make us think of uh, a hereditary hemolytic anemia or an acquired hemolytic anemia because the symptoms are of recent onset. Also chronic liver disease and connective tissue disease can give rise to hepatocyplinomegaly. Now we come to the differential diagnosis and we try to think uh, of each one according to the findings of the patient and we see how much of the findings in the patient match uh, certain pattern of the differential diagnosis. Like for an example, iron deficiency uh, is an important differential diagnosis. Why? Because it is a common cause of anemia. This is one. It is common in young females during the reproductive life because of the menstrual blood loss. And also uh, in our deficiency anemia, there is usually no hepatocytomegaly, no lymphadenopathy, no fever, and no jaundice, and no bleeding tendency in the skin. And so we can see that uh, the possibility that this is an iron deficiency anemia is there. The second differential diagnosis is beta thalassemia minor. Beta thalassemia minor is the prevalent in our country. Uh, it is the carrier status. Usually the patients are either asymptomatic or they present with mild anemia. Also there is no jaundice and most of the patients, they have no organomegaly. They don't develop 
lymphadenopathy or bleeding tendency. And therefore, this possibility is also uh, good in this uh, patient. The third uh, differential diagnosis is anemia for chronic disease. As you know, there are many uh, conditions that cause anemia, uh, chronic disease, I mean, like chronic infection, uh, malignancy, chronic renal disease, chronic liver disease, hypothyroidism, connective tissue disease, and so on. And as you see in this lady, the history was not suggestive of anemia of a chronic illness, especially renal disease or chronic infection or connective tissue disease. But sometimes the chronic disease uh, is deceiving especially in malignancy and in hypothyroidism. But still, we don't have strong evidence of anemia of a chronic disease. Hemolytic anemia uh, usually presents with anemia and jaundice, although some patients with mild hemolysis, the jaundice may, may be not clear. And as you know, uh, in hemolytic anemia, like immune hemolytic anemia, uh, there is a good possibility that the patient will develop uh, cyprinomegaly. Uh, and in this patient, you can see that there is no jaundice and no cyprinomegaly. And therefore, the possibility of hemolytic anemia is less if we compare it to the possibility of iron deficiency anemia. And this is also uh, the case for acute leukemia. Usually patients with acute leukemia, they develop anemia and many of them, they develop fever and the bleeding tendency because of thrombocytopenia. And some of the patients may develop lymphadenopathy and septinomegaly, but not all patients would develop these uh, uh, clinical features. And therefore, we, ca uh, we cannot judge that this differential diagnosis is totally absent. We cannot make sure, but we use the terms, very likely, likely, less likely, unlikely, uh, and so on, so that we can put uh, priorities. And this is what is called uh, clinical uh, reasoning. Clinical reasoning, we, it means that we discuss the differential diagnosis according to the clinical picture of the patient taking in consideration the, uh, whether the disease is common or rare, whether it is acute or chronic, uh, the age of the patient matching the disease, the gender of the patient is matching the disease, the clinical features that we found in the patient match the disease uh, pattern uh, of this condition, and so on. And so, iron deficiency is a likely explanation for this lady uh, condition. Beta thalassemia minor is possible because it is prevalent in our country. Anemia for chronic disease is less likely. It is not impossible. Why? Because Although there is no evidence of chronic disease, but sometimes the chronic disease presents uh, to start with, with anemia. Hemolytic anemia is also less likely. And for acute leukemia, it is unlikely because three months, the patient is developing progressive pallor and there is no evidence of 
hepatomegaly or lymphadenopathy or fever or bleeding tendency, but still we cannot say that this is definitely not acute leukemia because in medicine we cannot uh, uh, be sure unless we go for investigations. Okay. Now we come to the uh, data of the investigations of this patient. Her complete blood picture showed a hemoglobin of eight, white blood cell 4,000, platelet count 150,000, and ESR 14. The uh, differential of the uh, white blood cells is normal, as you will see, the reticulocyte percentage is 2%, okay, for the normal. The mean cell volume is 68, and you should uh, be able to recognize that this is less than the normal. Mean cell hemoglobin is also low, and so this is a hypochromic microcytic anemia. The ESR is 37, and so uh, uh, now I will highlight the abnormal findings in red, and this is the blood film of the patient. We can see that some of the red blood cells are hypochromic and microcytic. And uh, her blood biochemistry, the blood sugar is normal, serum creatinine is normal. That is important, why? Because we need to exclude uh, a chronic illness like renal impairment, liver enzymes are normal. We are looking for any evidence of liver disease. The serum LDH is normal, which is usually elevated in patients with uh, hemolytic anemia and malignancy. The total serum protein is also within normal. The total serum bilirubin is 0.6, confirming that this patient is not having jaundice. And uh, uh, now we come again for the differential diagnosis that we put uh, to start with. And we see if the investigations help us to change the differential diagnosis, the priorities or not. For the iron deficiency, we, uh, what, we, uh, what uh, did we find? We uh, found hypochromic microcytic anemia, and this is an important finding in iron deficiency. Uh, and therefore, sorry, uh, in beta thalassemia minor also we can find hypochromic microcytic anemia. Anemia for chronic disease sometimes can present with hypochromic microcytic anemia, but usually it is normal chromic normalcy. While hemolytic anemia, uh, except for the thalassemia, uh, usually it is normal chromic normocytic or slightly ma macrocytic and in acute leukemia the most important thing is the abnormality of the white blood cells and the platelet count and so we repeat the discussion there's a hypochromic macrocytic anemia normal white bc count normal platelet count and normal reticulocyte count the normal reticulocyte count also helps helps us to exclude hemolysis. Now, we come again after this discussion to see what happened to our differential diagnosis. Iron deficiency anemia now became very likely. The beta thalassemia minor is also likely, there's a hypochromic microcytic anemia. The anemia of chronic disease is less likely because till now we didn't find any evidence of, pro, uh, of a chronic uh, condition. The hemolytic anemia is less likely, or also we can say it is unlikely because the articulocyte count is normal and there is no jaundice. And the acute leukemia is unlikely because the white blood cell count is normal and there are no abnormal cells and the platelet count is normal. So what other tests now we need to order to uh, go further in this case. The choices which are present are the iron studies, the thyroid function test, bone marrow study, Coombs test, and hemoglobin electrophoresis. Iron studies are important to confirm the diagnosis 
of iron deficiency anemia, like serum fatty and serum iron, and serum total iron binding capacity. The thyroid function test, if we are going to think of it, uh, uh, if there is evidence of or suspicion of hypothyroidism, the bone marrow study in this patient is not uh, going to help much because the white blood cell count is normal. It is a hypochromic mycocytic anemia and the platelet count is normal. The COPE test uh, is uh, useful in confirming the diagnosis of immune hemolytic anemia. And in this patient, we didn't find any uh, evidence of hemolysis to start with. The hemoglobin electrophoresis may help us to uh, diagnose beta thalassemia minor as it shows increase in hemoglobin A2 concentration. So the most important thing that we need to uh, send for is iron studies. And hemoglobin electrophoresis if we want to exclude beta thalassemia minor. The uh, lab test results of this uh, patient uh, show that the serum ferritin is low, the uh, serum iron is low, total iron binding capacity is high. These, uh, these results are typical of uh, iron deficiency anemia, while the thyroid function test was normal. The hemoglobin electrophoresis was normal. The stool for cultural blood was negative, and this is important if we are thinking of uh, the cause of this uh, iron deficiency anemia. Usually, uh, uh, at this age, the cause is menstrual blood loss, but still, sometimes we need to think of GRT blood loss. So, the stool for cultural blood was negative. Uh, and the anti-tissue transglutaminase antibody test was negative. Why this was done? Because sometimes celiac disease can present with uh, lone iron deficiency anemia without the presence of impressive diarrhea or impressive weight loss. And we need to screen for this condition using the anti-tissue transglutaminase antibody. So, uh, what is the best treatment for this lady? We have the oral iron, we have the parenteral iron, we have blood transfusion, erythropoietin, and folate. So, what do you choose for this lady? And I believe that you know the uh, answer. Oral iron is the best uh, treatment for this lady. Parenteral iron is uh, given only in patients who are unreliable, they don't take the oral iron, or they cannot tolerate uh, oral iron, or they have severe malabsorption. A blood transfusion is not indicated unless the patient has attacks of syncope, or dyspnea, uh, severe dyspnea on exertion, or blood vision, and so on. Erythropoietin is not used for uh, an, uh, iron deficiency anemia, as well as folate. So the patient received oral ferrous sulfate and went home, and she uh, came after four weeks for re-evaluation. She used the tablets properly as stated by the family. The family was uh, observing that the uh, patient is taking uh, iron tablets. Her hemoglobin uh, at follow-up was still 8 grams per deciliter. And now, what is your explanation? We have five choices. Is this expected as hemoglobin increases after six weeks when we give iron? B, we need to do a bone marrow study now. C, we need to add folic acid to enhance the iron 
action. D, it is mostly due to continued blood loss, which is preventing the hemoglobin from increase, or uh, we need to do a reticulocyte count to document response. Uh, for A, usually the hemoglobin will start to increase after seven to 10 days. And therefore, after six weeks, the patient should show a response. While for bone marrow study, bone marrow study is not useful in the uh, World Cup of iron deficiency anyway, unless the patient is having multiple uh, conditions that may uh, interfere with the uh, level of serum ferritin and serum iron and so, serum uh, total iron binding capacity. And in these conditions, we may do a bone marrow study to look for the iron stores, or if we think that the patient is having iron deficiency anemia, but she had a bone marrow disease which is not uh, the, uh, the, uh, the case. Uh, adding folic acid for this lady is not useful because this is an iron deficiency anemia. But in, uh, during a pregnancy, folic acid, folic acid uh, deficiency is a common problem. And in this case, we need to add folic acid. Uh, the uh, continued blood loss is an important cause of failure of treatment with iron in patients with iron deficiency anemia, and therefore we need to address this possibility carefully. Uh, regarding the reticulocyte count, uh, to document the response, the reticulocyte count increases after giving iron uh, at day five uh, or day seven, and therefore. At day, uh, after six weeks, we don't expect to see reticulocytosis as an indicator of response for this lady. Probably, if uh, the, the question was at day seven, it will be useful, but after six weeks, it is not useful. I hope that uh, this discussion was uh, useful and uh, if you have uh, any comment, you can uh, send me your remarks on the uh, INLE uh, website, and I'm ready to answer all your questions. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, listening, and I hope. Uh, to see you again in another interactive case.